minutes just setting some context for uh, this call. And um, uh, so uh, uh, earlier this year, we, we spun up a project in HP. Uh, we, we call it the workplace of tomorrow. But the idea was that uh, we'd like to take all of the next generation communication and collaboration capabilities and deliver them to a relatively small number of people. About 1,000 people was our target in a coordinated and, in and integrated way so that we leverage the, the synergy of using you know, Exchange 2010, SharePoint 2010 with Windows 7 and Office and all of the OCSR2 voice telephone uh, conferencing capability. Um, we had a number of sub-themes in that. Um, we wanted to reflect the way that people work, the way they communicate, and the way that they collaborate. And we especially uh, were looking at trying to get more of people's data, the stuff that they use to work together off of laptops and get it into the, the data center, um, uh, as well as um, uh, in, improve the capability for the way that people communicate and collaborate, knowing that um, the, a lot of that technology is moving to enable social capabilities, people joining the workforce for the first time have grown up with things like Facebook and, and, and MySpace. And so um, as we started looking at you know, how do we shift, you know, how do we make that transition from people collaborating in email by mailing around dozens of attachments to people collaborating in SharePoint um, with a, a lot of the social capability to help uh, people you know, benefit from um, rating content and, and looking for reusable inf information and knowing that the most valuable content will, will percolate to the top. We were looking to fill that gap between Outlook and SharePoint to make SharePoint more of an accessible um, place for for people to do that, and, that and, and that's really how we ended up with uh, with Harmony. It was one of several things that we identified that might uh, potentially fill that void. Um, we we had a discussion with uh, with Harmony folks on the call here uh, earlier this year and uh, arranged to. Um, uh, use Harmony as part of our, our pilot. And um, uh, what we've been finding as we've been doing the surveys is that we're getting relatively low adoption, although there, there are some people who are very enthusiastic about uh, the, the capability. And part of what we attribute that to was that it's such a deep product, um, a lot of capability. People may not have invested the time in uh, really understanding what its, what its potential is. So what we'd like to do this morning is um, really have the experts go through that with us and not just talk about you know this feature or that feature, but maybe help us understand how other companies probably facing similar um, questions are, are, are using this to their advantage. So, uh, with that, I, I would suggest uh, let's, let's dive in and uh, see what you got. All right. All right, well, thank you, Stan. And again, this is Ron Johnson with Harmony. If you, if you have questions, please post them in the the the, the web uh, webinar panel, and we'll get to those at the end of the session. Uh, so the first thing I was going to do is start by kind of introducing you to Harmony, and, and and Harmony is a plugin, as you know, to Outlook to the sidebar here, and this is really what we consider to be what we call our our collaboration space, and and on the the left-hand side here, if I toggle off Harmony, this is an Outlook 2010 environment, and this is kind of the your personal space, your personal information. You have your inbox, your calendar, your contacts. So um, before we dive into the demo, and what I'm going to use today is kind of a, a standard business workflow or something that kind of crosses many boundaries, and that's responding to a request for a proposal. And, and it's a typical business scenario, and, and it, gives, it gives a chance to highlight many of the features of Harmony and, and how to improve, as, as, as Stan was saying, improve kind of collaboration and document collaboration, and also the adoption of social and the use of social and communication with inside of HP. So first thing I, I wanted to highlight, I know I think Paul Blish sent out an email earlier um, this week uh, regarding a new update of Harmony. So if you want to update Harmony, uh, go to the link that, that Paul provided. And, and under that link, uh, once you get there, you'll go right with the wrong directory. We'll go here. 
you will download or, or, or start downloading a file uh, called Harmony SharePoint. And, and once you do this, you double click on this or just run it, or run the download, and you'll get your standard type of install dialogs where you just have to click next, next, next to install. And, and that will update the Harmony sidebar to 3.1. Um, additionally, in that um, email was a, a license file attached to that email. And to install that, if you don't install the new version, uh, you do need to install the new license version or license or it will expire shortly. Uh, to install that new license file, you just go over to the Options menu in Harmony, go to the License tab, and then you browse out in, in your file system of where you stored that, select the license file, and say Open. And that will apply the new license, and you'll be, be reactivated and continue to be able to use all, all the features of Harmony. So, so that's kind of the administrative side of this. Um, let's start a, a bit with, as I said, we're going to go through kind of a business process here. And, and the first thing I'm going to start with is typically when we start up a new project, we spin up a new project, we will add a new team site to SharePoint. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to go out here and I'm going to open my browser up and I'm going to see that this is my new team site. Probably somebody sent me a, a, a URL for this. Or, or give me a way to get to it. I'm going to do a quick copy of this URL, and I'm going to go back over to the sidebar, and I'm going to add this just with a copy paste. And, and in my case, I'm going to put in custom credentials. Uh, I believe in your case, you're using um, integrated security, so you can just use the, use Windows credentials. So once I click OK here, that site is now added for me. So if I go up here, you'll see that I now have an integration proposal site. And if I click on that, there's a single document library out there called Shared Documents. And that's, a, that's the document library that we're going to use throughout most of this, um, this demo today and training today. But, but first, let's, let's go back a little bit before we dig too deep into that, and let's look at some of the, the basic features of Harmony. So I have some, some favorites I've already saved, and I'll show you how to set up favorites in a little bit here. But as you can see, Harmony brings in all of the SharePoint document libraries. So if I go to the document library that we have here called Marketing, as you can see, I can see the name, I can see Modify By, and, and I can see Ratings. And I can actually rate documents here. I can uh, instant message somebody right from the message or from the document. And also I have all the features of, of SharePoint easily exposed to me with inside of the Outlook uh, uh, window and, and application. So let's do something that we typically, uh, a, a typical scenario that we would do, and that it's, in this case, we just received this email from a client, and, and it has an attachment on it, and one of the first things I may want to do is, I would typically do, is I'm going to open this email up, and I'm going to get a new window for it, let me just drag it here to the middle, and one of the first things I may do is, I may forward this out to my team. So I'm just going to forward this out and say, you know, team, you know, good, yeah, if I can type good news, and, and I'm going to send this. And this is the first time you're going to see Harmony kind of kick into gear here. And what Harmony is going to do is suggest that instead of sending that, that attachment as a link, it's going to suggest that you put that out on SharePoint so that you have one place. And then... We have a dialog here that you can select the location so we can go browse and find our integration proposal site. And we click yes here. And now what's going to happen here is Harmony is going to replace that on the send operation, Harmony is going to replace that attachment with a well formatted link. And it's going to send, and let me close this and just to give you a, a, another view of this email. I'll go over to my outbox and see that our link here or our attachment has been replaced by this link. So now we, we have everybody kind of on the same page with this document and email. So I will close that. I'm going to also go, go back over to Harmony. I'm going to navigate around a little bit and I'm going to navigate over to our SharePoint uh, shared doc or our shared document. And you can see now that that RFP document that was an attachment is now saved here. Let's switch back to our inbox. 
And, and in this case, with this email, there's, there's important business information with inside this email. There's, there's the number of users, there's some dates we need to respond by. So maybe this email is something that we want to save to the sidebar or to SharePoint so that we save this email because a lot of decisions are made in interactions with email. So this gives us the ability to save our email along with our other you know, office documents, PDF files that are relevant for these projects that we're working on. So now you can see that I have this MSG file. I, if, if another user comes in and double clicks on that, that file will open just like any other email. Okay, and they'll be able to work on that and, and forward it and respond to that email. So that's one example. Another example of quickly being able to, to or efficiently be able to push information or publish information to SharePoint is, is I have a second email here from George Lawson. And what I want to do on this one is, all I want to save on this is the attachment. You can see that the, the information in the body of the email is, is not really relevant. So I quickly just grab the attachment and I can publish that to SharePoint. And now that is available on SharePoint. Um, another thing, as, as we look at how we publish information, a lot of times we'll have documents on our desktop that we've been working on. So in this case, I have a number of documents here that I've been working on related to this proposal or to this project. And, and I want to go out and, and I'm going to highlight a few of these and I'm just going to drag these over. And it'll let me, if I have one out there like this market research, it's going to add me, ask me if I want to add a new version. And I can click yes or I can just say create a different version of, of that document. So you can see all those documents were updated. They were also checked in for us all in the background. So I can continue working with inside of Outlook. So, so another thing is as, as we push more and more information into SharePoint, one of the challenges becomes not so much I, I know I have information out on SharePoint. It's how do I find information? So right from the Harmony toolbar, I can switch over to search mode. And maybe we have a we know we've been working on a project plan. And I can just type in project plan. And that's going to search across SharePoint for anything related to metadata or, or the properties on a document or file names or the content within the document. Anything that's been indexed by the SharePoint search engine is going to now return. And if I click on a document, you can see down below here that I can see where in that document I hit that word that I searched for. So now I found the document I want. And maybe what I want to do is go ahead and send that document out to somebody. So very quickly, just from SharePoint or from Harmony, I can just grab, if I want to send this IT project plan to somebody, I just grab it. And I put the link in, and maybe this is something I want to send to my team, you know, project plan. So again, it makes it very easy to push stuff into SharePoint and publish stuff to SharePoint, and also the ability to get things out of SharePoint and share them. So when I share this IT project plan with people, the nice thing here, again, is I'm sending them a link to this document. I'm not sending them the actual document, which means when they go to edit it, they're going to edit one version of the document. If I send this, if my team consists of 10 people who are 100 people, they all have that link. And now they don't have their own separate copies. And I don't spend the next weekend or, or my, my precious time over the weekend kind of consolidating changes on multiple versions of the document. So let me just go ahead and I'm going to kill that. Um, one of the things that you know, we've noticed through through patterns of use with, with many customers, and this actually is a is a an example of a customer request that we got for a change, is that when I exchange documents with people external to the company, a lot of times I will get them back with a new name. And and an example of this is or I took something offline and I want to work on it and I work on it, I rename it. In this example I renamed proposal to proposal version one. And one of the features we added was if I drag, if I drag it over here, and of course it's not going to. Let me do it with an attachment real quick. Interesting. All right, there we go. So, so now I can drag over here, and I can actually overwrite 
that document with a new version of the document. And, and on the upload, it will actually rename the document for me. So this makes it very easy when we're dealing with contractors and things that have their own naming conventions on, on, on files and documents. When we receive them back, it makes it very easy to append and add a version of the document uh, to SharePoint, to something that's already existing on SharePoint. So that kind of covers the basics of getting publishing documents in and out. We, we also, if you, we'll, we're going to switch over here and go to this email folder here. Additionally, one of the, the values that, that Harmony brings in SharePoint and making it easier to use is the ability to filter content and be able to look at it very, very easily. So in this document library, I've actually published a number of emails. And, and I can do this by, you know, I can just grab three or four emails and drag them in here. And, and they will publish. And so I'm just going to create multiple versions. But, but now I have these out here. One of the things I may want to do is take a look at this and, and these emails in more of an email view, something I'm familiar with. So one of the things Harmony does is when you drag and drop an email, we capture a lot of the properties and, and information around that email and tag that to the document. So that makes it very easy to look at the, the information in, in a more read, readable way. I can also change views here. So I can, I can do a category so I can have more of a conversation view of the emails I saved. So this is basically showing me emails all grouped by subject, which makes it very easy. And I can do those. I can create these custom views myself in SharePoint, or I can have you know, system admins or, or SharePoint site owners create different views for me. All right. So, so we've talked about all kind of the document features. Um, there's a lot more in there that we can go into. And if you have questions during Q&A, we can go through some more examples. Um, one of the things I additionally want to show is one of the newer things that has been added to Harmony is, is the ability to follow documents. And, and one of the, the concept here is very similar to, to what you see in Twitter and Facebook in which you follow people is is we spend a lot of time updating people about what we just did. So I just updated this PowerPoint presentation. Take a look at the new slide. Or, you know, I added, I, I, I reworked the financials on this on this project. Here's the updated document. And, and one of the, the nice things about Harmony is I have this ability to follow documents. So one of the things, I go back to my inbox. I'm going to navigate back over to our, our our integrated proposal. And as I've been using this document library a lot during this demo, you know, one of the, the things I really should do is add this to my favorites list. So when I add this as a favorite, I, I have now the ability in Harmony to say follow this document library. And, and when I do that, what will happen is that anytime somebody publishes something to this document, updates the document in here, adds a new document, adds a new version, I will get information on that. They could even be posting no board uh, requests on this or information on this. So when I do that, what will happen is that you'll get a little red, red circle similar to what you see on your iPhones and the smartphones these days indicating that there's new activity. And, and inside the People tab, there is an update stream with inside of the, the Harmony sidebar. And this update stream gives me two things. And one thing we're going to focus on first is really kind of document updates. But it, I also get my social updates. So any of my social network or colleagues that I'm working with and I've added as colleagues on SharePoint, I will see updates. And again, it's, it's always, you know, in this day and age, we get overwhelmed with information. So the ability to search and filter down that information is very important. So one of the things I can do here is if I want to just see, you know, we were working on this proposal document together, and I see that June Maxwell has updated the proposal. I see she's tagged it. Okay, maybe she rated it. All those things will show in the in the proposal. Let's take a look at another one. Let's see if I can road map. And, and in this roadmap document, if I search through here, I can see that Carl Adams has updated it. He posted new screenshots. Uh, June, again, is very busy and updated this. Kathleen has rated this four stars. So again, the idea that as content becomes 
more valuable or people see it as more valuable, they can rate the documents and they will percolate to the top of our list. So it makes it, again, another way to easily find content or better find content. So if I want to know, I see that Carl actually updated this document or posted, I can easily just click on the, uh, the, note, the, uh, the link there and I can see that Carl added some noteboard posts. Okay, so that's one example of a way. And you can see that Harmony switched to the document view. Uh, we have the, the note board here open. We also are, are sitting on this document. So what is, I want to go back over, and I'm going to use favorites this time. We're going to go look at the version history on our proposal document. And you can see that on our version history, as I start to update this document, you can see that there are multiple updates here. Uh, if, if for myself, if I wanted to update this document, all I need to do is double click and the document is going to open up in Word. And now Word is going to give me the ability to check it out. I could have also checked it out from, from Harmony. And if I go in and do some updates in here and then I go back and, and let me just put a, a comment in here, checked in from Word, and I can check this back in. I close this document. I hit refresh on the sidebar, and if we open the version history again, you can see that my comment now and my new version of this document is, is available. And again, we also expose, again, that the idea behind Harmony is to keep you from the distractions and keep you focused on the tasks you're trying to complete, and by doing that, we're keeping you inside kind of the Outlook window and not making you open the browser over and over again to do these tasks. You can also do, just to give you an idea of the deep integration here, you can also open you know, older versions of the document. I can go over here, um, copy a link to an older version of a document, say somebody made some changes I don't agree with. I can restore the version, the original version or a previous version. I can delete version. So all the features of SharePoint are exposed with inside of Outlook. So one of the things that, we, if we go back to our, our tab here, you know, maybe in this example, I see that Carl, you know, posted some new roadmap slides, and I click here, and now I see the version history, and I want to know, I want to talk to Carl and understand what he's doing, or I want to talk to June. One of the things I can do here is I can click on the picture of June here, and this will bring up June's full profile from SharePoint. So if you've updated your profile, I also now have the ability to, I can send her an email, I, I could quickly chat with her, and this will open the chat window. I'm going to say, you know, need to, you know, discuss, and we'll just go with that. So, so it makes it very easy for me to kind of escalate a, a conversation from, okay, I see you made changes on a document. I was notified of that and didn't have to wait for you to tell me to the fact that now I can inter very quickly interact with you to ask you what you did with that document. And, and if we need to get on the phone and we have telephony hooked up, I can now just simply click here and I can call June too. I can also, maybe I don't know much about June. I see that her interests, I can see you know what she's working on, her skills. So it gives me an idea of, of the benefits of social networking and being able to become more familiar with people. So hopefully uh, this all makes sense. Um, the last thing kind of of this, and then we'll open it up to Q&A, I'm going to do is to show you a little bit more about how Harmony brings kind of the social artifacts of SharePoint back into Outlook. And one of the first things we do here is if I click here, it makes it very easy. One of the big benefits of social is being able to find people in our organization or quickly find people. So maybe the proposal we've been working on I need somebody from legal to review this proposal. So I'm going to just type legal in here, and I can see that I have four people in legal. Well, maybe that's not, not quite enough, and, and I want to do a more a, a search on skills, and I just type GSA. Well, now I'm down to one person in our legal department that is familiar with GSA. Now, at HP, you may end up with 100 people uh, on that. So it gives you the ability as people fill out these profiles to kind of narrow your searches and find people of common interest, of uh, working on the same task. So now again, I can I can click on on Deborah's picture. I bring up her profile, 
and I, I, I want to remove her as a colleague. I should have done that before we started the demo. But now if I want to add Deborah to this to this project team, I can just go and add Deborah as a colleague. And if I want to put her on this RFP, this integration proposal we're working on, or on that team, I now just click there and I've added her to our team. And now my update is as, as Deborah does things, I will see she changes our status, she writes documents, she publishes documents. I will see that in our update stream. Additionally, on, on the people tab, we have we have some additional options down here. And one of the ones that's nice is, is recent. And, and what recent's doing is just what you would expect. As we communicate with people and we're working on projects, we have a tendency to communicate with the same people over and over again. And what that does is, if you remember, we sent a, uh, an instant message to June. So you'll see that June is, is popped to the top of our, our list here. We also did an instant message to Carl. Uh, we've sent an email to George. So, so as people we're talking to, it makes it very easy for us to reach back out to them and a bit more efficient on reaching back out to them. Ad additionally, within here, we have our colleagues view. And our colleagues view is, is you remember we added Deborah to our, our RFP integration proposal or project. And now you see these are our colleagues we're working on on a project basis. And I can always filter these down. Or I can also go to this tab called Suggested Colleagues. And what Suggested Colleagues is doing is helping me connect with people that I'm interacting with or, or that have information that I need. So this is looking at people I, I am with all the time people I exchange a lot of emails with, uh, people I'm co-authoring documents with. As you do that, these people will, will pop up and become your suggested colleagues and help you build out your network. And, and all I need to do here is click on add a colleague here. So, so let's go, actually I wanted to go back here, and, and if maybe like Angela here or Melissa that we clicked on, we don't know a lot about Melissa. So we, as you can see, you can see the profile here. I can also click here, links, to, to open a profile. I can also go here and, and do some additional actions. And these actions basically complement the SharePoint web UI, the browser UI. So building an org chart in our, little, in our sidebar is a little difficult, but I can easily get out to the, the org chart with inside of SharePoint and see it. So this gives me an ability to dive a little deeper and learn more about Melissa and understand where she reports. And we always get these meeting invites at times where people send us meeting invites and we're not sure who they are. It gives us a great way to um, connect with these people. So I, I believe that is, is, is all I, I wanted to kind of formally show and dig into. Um, one other, I guess, um, feature I kind of skipped that I wanted to show you is, is anytime you click on an email here, you'll notice that a, a business card opens up. And I had it minimized, but, but this gives us a, the ability when we're clicking on, on emails to actually be able to very quickly connect with these people. And if I go to Harman, again, I can click and see Harman's full profile. And that integration works both with your email and also your calendar. So as you get calendar invites, you can click on people and you'll see both, not only who is on the, the subject line, but you can also drill down on who is in the CC line. So if somebody was on the CC of that email. All right, so give me a second here. And I'm going to go out of full mode here so I can see the, the webinar control panel. And, and if anybody has any questions at this time, we'd be happy to open this up and start answering questions. So I'm, I'm going to look through. I don't see any questions being posted. Yeah, Ron, can you hear me? I can, yes. Yeah, there were some questions posted already. One, uh, one was, uh, is this being recorded? And yes, this is being recorded. And we'll send out an email with a link for the recording uh, probably on Monday morning. Then there was another question that's uh, more appropriate for Stan. And uh, let me grab that. 
real quick. Question is, uh, is the overall goal to have SharePoint the definitive source of data? If so, will data on SharePoint be backed up and the ability to restore? Dan, are you available to take that? Let me uh, check and make sure I don't stand muted again. All right, Stan, you should be off mute. All right, thank you. Um, I don't think it's the intent to make SharePoint the definitive store for information. I believe we've got there are different ways that people communicate and collaborate, and there's some information that's more appropriate for putting in, say, a, a file share um, versus putting in SharePoint. Uh, the size of the, the, the document, what, what, what is in it, um, might make a difference, but also the way that people use it. You know, the, 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 I see SharePoint as a platform for collaboration, so it's a place to store documents that you want you know, to, to encourage collaboration with, as opposed to a file share that may be more of a, a place to, to put something that, that, that you're not, not necessarily actively collaborating with, but you just need a place to, to store it and perhaps share it with a small number of people in a more confined way. So I, I think that um, you know, the Exchange store for, for messaging stuff, SharePoint for, for collaboration stuff, there'll be file shares for other types of information, but from an employee perspective, I'd, I'd like at least some consistency between these platforms so that uh, all information is searchable, it's appropriate, that employees can, can get access to that data no matter what kind of device they're carrying, and, um, and, and have the ability to set you know, granular permissions on things so that as your um, community that you're collaborating with expands and contracts, it's not a, a painful process to go and grant and deny access to people. And I think we, you know, we, in HP we probably have some problems that we need to fix along the way. Um, one one thing that um, was clear as we were going through the demo was um, it's it's great to be able to drag and drop a document with Harmony and create a link in an email, but it's only useful if the person who's receiving the message can actually click on the link and get to the document. Um, it's one thing to have people outside of HP who obviously can't do that, but even employees with mobile devices today, um, if I sent, if I did that. Um, uh, they and they click on the link, nothing will happen because the, the the phones don't have access to SharePoint today. So we do have to do some work to create an environment where this thing can do what it does so well at, at the kind of scale that we need it to, and in, in the ways that people work. Great, and that leads into another question: Can we control permissions on shared documents or only on personal documents? That would be another question for you, Stan. Um, so you can obviously set permissions on SharePoint libraries um, to grant and deny access. One thing that I bumped into is that uh, you know if, if I'm looking at uh, protecting things at a team level or an organizational level, there are already distribution lists in Active Directory that I might have created or other people might have created that would lend themselves to be using them to set permissions, but not all distribution lists are created equal. <laughs> some of them are email only and some of them can are uh, access rights only and some of them are hybrid. So we might have to come back around as, as we start to use SharePoint more in this mode, whether we're doing it with Harmony or whether we're doing it just as with SharePoint in, in, in just working standalone, uh, we, we probably will, will want to refine um, how we create distribution lists and groups in Active Directory so that they can easily be used to set permissions on documents um, because I, I bumped into that personally. But you, can, you absolutely can um, set fairly granular permissions on um, content in SharePoint based on um, Active Directory. So, so a couple of things that, to add to what Stan had just mentioned in answering those questions is one is I whenever you register the your first site and it has a social server the the features of SharePoint your my site will automatically be registered so the document storage area there for that and this is a great place where you you automatically get a personal document and a shared document folder this is a great place to start 
you know, publishing documents that you will need to be collaborating on if there's not already a team site set up. And, and the second point is, is as you know, as, as Stan mentioned, sometimes you do need to send the document external to the company. And this is a bit, bit hard, you'll have to visualize this a bit, but to do that, Harmony has made it very easy to do. Instead of just doing a standard drag and drop in which you get a, a, a link, what you do is hold the Alt key down and then do the drag and drop. And in that case, you will end up with the, the actual attachment. Ron, perhaps you can also show when you send, when you replace attachments with links, dialog comes up, you have options there as well. Yeah, so so one of the things when, as Joe was mentioning, if I'm sending this out and, and let's say when I when I open this up, I, I have the ability as I showed you to share this or send this attachment and replace it. I can also click here and in this case it won't replace the attachment and it'll still push this document to SharePoint and publish this to SharePoint, but it'll leave it as an attachment. Again, if, if I'm working on something and I, I've attached it from my desktop, this gives me the, the, the ability to say, okay, on the same act, send action, I want to save this thing to SharePoint, and I want to send the attachment. You know, and, and the other part of this that I didn't highlight, because we, we always have a bit of limited time, is from inside an open, email message, I can always do a save message here, or if it has an attachment, this is grayed out now because there's no attachment, I can save the attachment to SharePoint. So it makes it very easy, and these, those are just additional shortcuts for saving stuff to SharePoint. Joe, were there additional questions? Yeah. Let's see. Regarding version history, can you open a previous version of the document? The answer to that is yes. Is when I when I look at version history, and let me go to a document I know has some good version on it. If, if I if I go here and I click to get the version history, there are additional actions down here that allow me to let's say I want to go back to version eight or seven. I can actually copy the link. I can open this version, so I can just click it, and you'll see that uh, I, it opens in Word. Um, I can also write from there. I can, it can if I decide that this this version should be promoted back to the original version, I can restore the version and I can delete it. And one of the things that just just to be, you know, if you don't see some of these features when you're playing or using Harmony. It's most likely because the features are not turned on in SharePoint. So Harmony exposes the features and is very sensitive to what is enabled on the SharePoint side. So you can set up document libraries that have no versioning, okay? Uh, and in that case, you will not get the, the version history. So if that comes up, just, you know, look at or talk to the system admin or SharePoint site admin for that and see if you can get the document library to have versioning turned on. And we have a follow-up question for you, Stan. Will there be storage limits on SharePoint? Uh, based on our history, there are guaranteed to be some limit on on uh, SharePoint. I think you know. I'm I'm not sure what the quota limits are today. We obviously have. I bumped into this myself that we have size limits on documents that you can upload. I think it's 50 megabytes. I mean, generally, in in a company of this size, um, we always have to manage storage in in some way. Um, our goal with with email, for example, is to go from a 200 meg mailbox to uh, something much bigger. You know, we're, we're using two gigabytes within our workplace of tomorrow pilot, and um, I'm hoping that as our storage technology evolves and the, the cost of storage goes down, we'll continue to increase the amount of space that people have to to do their work. Um, I just don't know what that number is. <laughs> to to add to the stand answer there a little bit is, you know, he had asked me in the beginning to share some stories. So just give me an idea on, on the impact that Harmony and, and, the, and more use of SharePoint can have on storage. While yes, it does move some, um, 
the one of our, our clients, one of our initial clients that, that invested in Harmony, they, they rolled out about 6,000 users in their headquarters. And what they saw was before Harmony, they were sending about 70,000 attachments per day. And, and after Harmony was, was added to the, to the 6,000 corporate workers, not all their, their employees, they reduced the number of attachments being sent by over 40%. Okay, so that not only has a significant impact on the number of collaboration objects that are being created, it has an impact on your your email quota and, and if you're hitting quota issues and, and all. So it, it can have a significant impact on the overall storage requirements and how that's managed. That's a very good point. So Joe just pointed out that I hadn't unmuted everybody. And so I'm going to unmute everybody in case there are additional questions that people want to ask. Background noise. Maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah. So I put everybody back on mute because there was a lot of background noise. So if you have questions, we, we'd be happy to take additional questions. Um, you can follow up with Joe and I on questions. One last thing that I wanted to show is is right from within inside the Harmony sidebar, you can jump out to the online help. And this is, I think our team did a, a really good job on, on kind of making this pretty easy to look for and, and, and find stuff. There are also how-to videos available uh, that will kind of walk you through the different steps and all. So you can click on those and, and, and take a walk through if, if you need a refresher on any, any of the points we went over or want to dig deeper into anything we've covered. Joe, any additional questions? All right, so I guess... No, I'm not seeing any additional questions. All right, so let's wrap up for today. Again, if, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Joe and I. We'd be happy to answer any of those questions. And with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and end the session today. All right, appreciate everybody attending. Thanks, Stan. Thanks, Joe, for setting this up. Uh, thanks, guys. Very useful.